And would you please tell us what you do for a living? I'm a graduate student in computational biology at University of Colorado. Do you know this guy right over here, seated in between these two women with the beard and the mustache? And the yes. Glasses? How do you know him? Um, I knew him from school. Um, he went to school with me at the University of Colorado. I want to talk to you about the time that you met him all the way through when you last spoke with him, okay? okay. First off, are you nervous? Yes. I understand. First, tell me when you first met the defendant. I first met the defendant at orientation in August 2011. And was that at the Anschutz campus of the University of Colorado? Yes, it was. What was that interaction like? I do not remember really having an interaction with him. He sat at the same table as us um, at orientation, but I do not remember talking to him. When you say us, who is us? Um, I know Ben Garcia was there. I don't remember anyone else who was there on, a ta on that table. Did you make any observations uh, of the defendant in August of 2011? Just that he was wearing bright blue sunglasses. Okay. Really bright blue sunglasses. Yeah. When was the next time you remember having any more significant contact with the defendant? Sometime in September 2011, um, in classes together, we all graduate students at Anschutz Medical Campus take this core biology class together and we're in the same class. And what was the period of time that you were in class together? Um, we were in the core class from September to December 2011 and um, another neuroscience class from January to May 2012. What was that second class you mentioned? Um, I believe it's called Biological Basis of Neurological Disorders, something of that sort. And that lasted pretty much that entire second semester, if I'm using the right term? Yes. Now, at the time that you guys um, first had that class together back in September of 2011, um, how did you end up getting to know him any better than you had at the orientation in August? Uh, the defendant sat behind us in class, so you usually in that class interact with people around you, and he sat behind us, so we got to talking. I don't remember the specific instance, though. By the time that you had started talking to the defendant, had you already made some other relationships or friends at the Anschutz campus? Yes. Were they also in that class? Yes. Tell us who they are. Um, so the people who sat together were Ben, ben, Gar ben Garcia, uh, Tim Tapscott, and um, Charlotte Siska sometimes sat with us, and sometimes Emily Booster sat with us. That last name, Charlotte, what was the last name? Siska. Can you spell that? Do you know? S-I-S-K-A. Okay, Siska. Okay, thank you. Um, it, and do you remember the setting when you first started having a conversation with the defendant? And my question is going to be after that is, who started talking to whom first? I do not remember who started talking to whom first, yeah. Okay, and what was that like? What other observations did you make of the defendant in those early days of your class together in September? Um, he seemed shy and quiet. He seemed to take notes in class uh, before I started talking to him. Those were the observations I made. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you started talking, was it about anything in particular or just the class that you were in? The first conversation I remember having with him is talking about um, a study session that a big group of people in that class used to go to and inviting him to the study session. Did he seem open to it? Yes. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes with what has been marked as People's Exhibit 1, 2, 4, 3. Ma'am, take a look at that. And if you recognize what that is, would you tell us what it is? Yes. Um, I believe to invite him to the study sessions which we used to have at different places, different coffee shops around Denver, um, I, um, to tell him where it was going to be next, uh, I took his number and gave him a missed call. And apparently it did not go through, so he found my email address and emailed me, um, giving me his number again, so I could tell him where the, the study session was. This people's exhibit 1243, is this that email that you recall receiving? receiving? Yes. And this is a fair and accurate copy of the email that you received from the defendant on September 23rd, 2011? Yes. Doesn't look like it's been changed in any way? No. Your Honor, I'm going to move for the admission of 1243 into evidence, please. Any objection?
I, I don't have an objection. If we could perhaps have her put her name on there so that later we know um, uh, who this was sent to, since it doesn't have any to information. Do you have any objection, Mr. Brocker, to her putting all, her name on there? I think it's a good idea. Okay, let's do that. With that, then, P TR 12. Is it 1243? Yes, sir. All right, 1243 is admitted. Can you. Using your best print, write your name at the top of that just so that we... Sure. Do you have a pen? I can get one for you. There's one here. Okay. And you know what? Do me a favor. Why don't you add today's date under there just so that we remember when you testify? Do you know what today it is? Today is the 10th, right? Yes, ma'am. Done. Thank you. Your Honor, I'm going to move for... Uh, publication of 1243. Uh, it'll obviously be without this, the name and the date uh, on it. That request is granted. Now, other ma'am, can you blow up the part next to subject? No, not that. that, 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 that. After you see, it says, oh, that's not it. Ma'am, look at subject and it says 2117 when it gets to all next to whatever that is begins with hey girl can you put that up for us is this what he typed to you in the subject apparently okay yeah and then can you give us just the rest of the, the text the body of it Now this right here, uh, it says that, uh, and he gives you his his cell phone number. Is that the cell phone number you came to know belonging to the defendant? I believe so. I don't remember his cell phone number, but I had only one, so. And would you have put it in your phone so you didn't have to look it up ever again? Yes. Okay. Um, and did he ever tell you the best ever world's greatest knock-knock joke? I do not remember him telling me that. Is this writing style and sort of the way he injects humor into it. Is this consistent with how he communicated with you in writing throughout the time that you communicated with him in writing? For the most part. Thank you. Thank you. Now, after you guys had ended up exchanging cell phone numbers, uh, did he end up going to that study session with you? I believe, I, I don't exactly remember, but as far as I remember, I, he did. Tell us the progression of how it went from were two people in class doing study sessions together to something more. Um, so we started interacting more, and he and Ben Garcia became friends too. So the three of us started hanging out more, and I believe he asked me out on a date. I don't remember who did who asked who asked whom out on a date, but yeah. Would it be out of character for you to have asked him? No. Uh, but you just can't remember. I just can't remember. Do you remember what that first date was? Um, we, we went to a film festival in Denver. What, what kind of film festival? A horror film festival. That's romantic. Um, did you do anything else before or after? Uh, we grabbed dinner at some point. I do not remember if it was before or after. Do you remember what period of time that was in terms of September or October? Sometime in October. After that, did you begin to see each other, and I'm gonna use the term romantically, you tell me if that's wrong, romantically more often? Yes, um, we would hang out together once or twice a week, maybe. And when you hung out, what, what, what does that mean to us? So we would go out or stay in and watch a movie and grab dinner, etc. When you'd watch a movie, something that you would rent or something off of Netflix? <laughs> Netflix mostly, I would say. Okay, and when you went out to dinner, any place in particular? No particular place um, jogs my memory. There were, uh, yeah. Did you continue to hang out as a group with, you told us uh, he became friends with a man named Ben Garcia. You'd also previously mentioned Tim Tapscott. Did you guys continue to do things together? Yes, the four of us did things together often. Tell us about them. So we went on a hike to Dinosaur Ridge once. Uh, we used to play board games together often, the four of us, and also went for movies and stuff together. You said you played board games together. Tell us what kind of board games you played. 
Judge, I'm going to object to relevance. Overrule. Go ahead. Um, so I know we played Dominion, which is a, almost a card game kind of board game. Um, What's it, what, is it a strategy game? Is it a luck So game? if you know magic cards, it's pretty similar but much faster. It's a strategy card game almost. So they have their own uh, custom cards and it's a strategy card game. Yes. Where would you guys play? We would rotate between different people's places. Like, yeah. Now, during this time, you had, it sounds like you had the opportunity to observe him both at school and in places with just you and places with this group of a couple other people. Is that fair? Yes. I want to ask you to describe how the defendant's demeanor or presentation was in each of those. First, at school. How was he at school? He was pretty shy and closed off at school. He wouldn't, that, sorry, he wouldn't go interact with other people by himself at school. And by interact, did you ever see him go up to someone and initiate a conversation with them? Not that I remember. Would he respond if someone approached him with a conversation? Yes. How was he in terms of interacting in that smaller group of, it sounds like, better friends, Ben and Tim and you? I would say he was more, he, would, he was more forthcoming than he was in school. But he still wasn't extremely interactive. How about when it was just you and he? He was, he would talk a decent amount then, yeah. And was that a, a marked difference between what you saw when you were with him by yourself versus how you saw him in the classroom and, and at school? A marked difference between those two, yes. In each of those three settings, did you ever see him um, show a wide range of uh, emotion or was it pretty flat still? He never had highs and lows of emotion ever, no. He was pretty calm for the most part and friendly if people interacted with him. Now, did you get a sense of his sense of humor? And we saw some of it in the very first communication he had with you in an email. In person, his sense of humor, humor was, sometimes his jokes fell flat in person. And yeah. <laughs> What does that mean, his jokes sometimes fell flat? So, I guess um, the best way I can, I can describe it, sometimes in person when he made a joke, other people wouldn't laugh at it, or there would be forced laughs. Did you perceive why that was? Was it the substance of the joke or just the delivery? Um, I don't exactly remember, okay. but I'd say both maybe. Now, yeah. did you discern a difference between how he was in person with a sense of humor and how he was in writing? Yeah, his sense of humor in writing was um, mostly pretty funny. Did he seem quick-witted to you? In writing, yes. Now, uh, during this time now, we've started to talk about October and we're moving forward and you spent more time together. Is it still just the one to two times per week? Yes, uh, we had a pretty stressful class together five days a week and 8 a.m. So it was really hard to hang out during the week, really. How did he seem to do in those classes? From what he told me, it was about average back then, yeah. Tough classes? Very tough classes. Okay. How big were these classes that you were in? All the graduate students were in there, so I want to say around 60, 70 people, but I'm not sure. Now, one thing that might happen as you become closer to someone romantically is you start hanging out on holidays together. Did you start doing that? Um, I don't remember anything about Thanksgiving. On Christmas, I was out of town. Okay. Now, during the period between Oct and Halloween, nothing? Um, I don't remember. I'm sorry. That, that's all right. Yeah. Between October and the end of that first portion of your first graduate year, um, did you grow closer together? We grew closer in November and December, I would say, somewhat closer, yes. What sort of things would you talk about when you would share? We mostly talked about school. Um, in December, he talked a bit about his family. Okay. Um, did, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be indelicate here, but did you ever get to the point where you began to have a physically intimate relationship with the defendant? Yes. Okay. Um, did he ever express to you that that was his first physically intimate relationship? No. In fact, did he tell you something different than that? Yes. Um, he told me um, 
that he had grown intimate with someone in camp, um, I believe an undergraduate, but I don't exactly remember. And did he tell you where he went to undergraduate school? I think you see Riverside, not sure. Okay. Um, during this time also, did you begin to communicate other than just in person with each other? Um, on chat, um, Google chat, and sometimes to make plans on text messaging. All right, text messaging you mean by using your cell phones? Yes. And was that frequent or infrequent? Not that frequent. What was the second most frequent form of communication other than talking face to face? Google chat, so IMing each other, instant messaging each other on Google. Okay. And did that once that started, did that continue pretty regularly through the time that you were together? Yeah. Was there any other way that you did you ever talk on the phone much? Not much, no. All right. As you approached the, the Christmas break, did you get some time off that you got to leave the school? Yes. Him too? Yes. Did you guys stay in touch over that break? Yes. And you didn't spend New Year's together? No. I was out of town. Do you remember about when you came back? It would have been early January sometime. Uh, him too? Yes. And did you start back up again kind of where you'd left off in December? Yes. Was it different at all? Um... I was getting distant from him. Why? Um, I had already told him in the start it would be a casual relationship, and um, I did not really feel much closer with him, so I wanted to break up with him. Did you have a sense of how he felt towards you? I think he liked me more than I liked him, but I didn't talk about it. So. When he came back from, did you know where he went, by the way? Uh, California to visit his family. When he came back, did you spend time again together as you had before? Um, I don't remember exactly, but I might have reduced spending time with him a bit. Do you ever remember him telling you that he had gotten mononucleosis? No. Given the status of your relationship, do you think you'd remember if he'd had Definitely. the kissing disease? Definitely, yeah. Okay. And never mentioned that to he you? He never mentioned that to me. Did you observe any signs in him that he was suffering from some sort of illness, sickness, disease? I mean, he might have gotten a cold once in a while, but everyone does, yeah. Okay. So we're moving now through um, January. Has he talked to you at all about where he is with his rotations and his studies? I believe what he said was his first rotation went well, and he was thinking of joining that lab. Um, his second rotation wasn't going so well, um, so that's what he told me. Okay, and this continues on until, how long do you guys continue to see each other before things change? We kept dating until mid to end of February. I don't remember the exact date. Did but you say mid to end of February? Yes. Okay, and do you remember how it ended? Yes, I... I I don't remember if I texted him or called him, but I told him that I needed to talk to him. I went over and told him that I don't see a future with him, and thus I'm breaking up with him. You went over to his place? Yes. Now, let me ask you some questions about that. How, how often would you go over to the defendant's apartment? Maybe once a week. Okay, and is, if you guys spent the night together, would it be there or your place or both? I think both. Describe for us the cleanliness level of the of the defendant's apartment. His living room and his kitchen were extremely clean. Um, he didn't like leaving dishes in the sink at all. Uh, his bedroom had clothes all around, so it was pretty messy. Okay. In the times that you spent together, did you ever notice anything um, negative or different about his hygiene or the way he dressed or any of those issues? No. And is that, is that, was he consistent in that from the first time you saw him till the last time you saw him? Yes. At his apartment, when you two would sleep, since you would know, did, did you have trouble sleeping during this stressful graduate school year? Yes. Did he too? I believe so. Okay. Now you talked about these, uh, these G-chats, and have you had a chance to look at them, by the way? Yes. All right. Now, Your Honor, with the court's permission, I'd like to approach with what's been marked as 649.
You may. Ma'am, I'm handing you what's been marked as 649, and you know we were just talking about the G chats, the, the Gmail chats. Have you had a chance previously to look at this exhibit? Yes. And does this contain the Gmail chats between you and the defendant over the period of time that you had a relationship? Yes. In fact, does it actually go a little bit past when you had a relationship? Yes. Now, you've had a chance to go through there. Uh, is that a fair and accurate representation of the, the and let me just ask, what's the right way to call it? Is it G-Chat, Gmail chat, Google chat? G-Chat or Google chat, both work. Okay, G-Chat. Are, are these the fair and accurate copy of the G-Chats that you had with the defendant? Yes. Do these G-Chats also give us a glimpse into the communication style that the defendant had over the period of time that's covered here from roughly October through the end of March? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to move for the admission of People's Exhibit 649 into evidence. Any additional objection? No additional objection. And again, I would request that she put her name on there. Okay. Thank Any you. objection to that? No, I was going to do that, but okay. she beat me to it. All right. Please put your name on there. All right. The date and as well? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. And based on my prior ruling, uh, P-TR-649 is admitted.